The Russian offensive in eastern Ukraine took shape today as Moscow pushed more troops into the Donbass region against dug-in Ukrainian forces. The U.S. says that it believes this latest Russian action is a prelude to an even larger offensive to come. And in the coming days, President Biden is expected to announce another military aid package similar in size to the $800 million in weapons the U.S. pledged last week. Meantime, the United Nations Secretary General called for a four-day truce to observe Orthodox Easter, celebrated in both Ukraine and Russia, and to get aid to desperate people suffering under the Russian onslaught. Stephanie Tsai begins our coverage. As air raid sirens blare, those who remain in Slovyansk, a city in the Donbass, go about their day. Many have already left, but coffee shop owner Ivan chose to stay, his faith in the Ukrainian army unshaken. We were actually prepared for this. We believe in our army and our victory, and that the combat operations won't reach Slovyansk. We will stay here till the very last moment. While those combat operations have not yet struck Slovyansk, a Russian missile attack less than 10 miles away in Kramatorsk killed at least one person today. It's part of Russia's fresh offensive to seize the Donbass region in eastern Ukraine, an area Moscow-backed separatists have been trying to capture for the past eight years. As the assault unfolded overnight, President Volodymyr Zelensky remained defiant. No matter how many Russian soldiers are driven there, we will fight. We will defend ourselves. Local officials have urged residents to evacuate, but for the third day in a row, no agreement was struck to open humanitarian corridors. In this frontline village, the vulnerable and elderly bear the brunt of the hardship. Gregory is being evacuated by workers at his hospice. Too weak to move by himself, he thanks those who helped him escape. The main difficulty is that people who can't move had to be evacuated. Very ill people who are living their final days or weeks or months. In the first day of Russia's new assault, Russian forces have taken full control of Crimea, a sign Moscow is planning a larger offensive in the Donbass region. But a senior U.S. defense official today said the key port city of Mariupol is still contested and Ukrainian soldiers are not willing to give up. Officials said today Russia is still bombarding the city's Azovstal steel plant, where the last Ukrainian defenders are holding out. They have refused another Russian call to surrender. Inside the plant, Ukraine says no fewer than 1,000 civilians are also hiding. My youngest child cries at everything. He and the oldest one are starting to get depression. It's been really frightening lately, even to go out of the bunker to use the toilet. Russia's defense ministry said today it struck over 1,000 military targets across Ukraine, but civilian areas are not spared. Last Saturday, a Russian rocket barrage hit a residential area of Kharkiv. The attack also destroyed facilities being used by the World Central Kitchen, a nonprofit that's provided millions of meals for Ukrainians that can't leave. And as you can see, tremendous amounts of damage. A day Still after the, the assault, Nate there. Mook, the nonprofit CEO, gave an inside look at the right wreckage. Here, he said four of his staff were wounded. Out. I spoke with him today. Uh, there was just complete carnage. Uh, pieces of cars were in trees. But it was a big strike. And those staff members now, those staff members are now out of the hospital and recovering. There's definitely been an increase in the attacks here in Kharkiv. Uh, even last night, it was constant shelling all, all throughout the night. You're just hearing the booms, the booms, they shake you inside. The organization has already set up at a different kitchen in Kharkiv, so it can continue its mission. This one is underground. This is a city that is quiet because so many people have left, but there are still a lot of people here, stuck here, and in many cases, unable to leave because of mobility issues. They don't have vehicles. They don't have money to do so. In these villages and towns all around Kharkiv, the World Central Kitchen team, our local partners, are a critical lifeline to families in these communities. So even after this carnage that you witnessed right next to one of your operating restaurants, still not shaken from your mission, sounds like. You know, what 
keeps me going is all of the Ukrainians that I'm surrounded by, their strength and resilience to keep going. Uh, the fact that some of those injured staff told me they are ready to jump right back in and get back to work. You know, that really keeps us going. Meanwhile, in the capital, Kyiv residents line up to get their hands on a new stamp that shows a Ukrainian soldier flipping off a Russian warship. It depicts a moment of defiance from earlier in the war and a Russian ship that Ukrainians apparently sunk last week. The confidence of those moments has persisted. I've got the feeling that we are going to win. I don't know why, but this feeling doesn't go away. The feeling that we will get our victory. For the PBS NewsHour, I'm Stephanie Sai.